put in the mixed recycling bin. Empty. Oh, my name is Gary Trin. Uh, I guess I would describe myself as a visual artist working photography. In the last couple of years, I'm doing a bit of painting as well and some video, but predominantly I've been working in photography. In Christmas of 1986, right, this is crazy. Christmas is 1986. I was really interested in graffiti. I wasn't doing graffiti, but there was graffiti, like the graffiti was a hot thing. And there was these two graffiti books that I saw in Dimix. Right. One was spray can art, the other one was subway art, you know. And they were behind glass, the glass um, casing at Dimmix, you know, and I really wanted them. I really wanted those books. So my, for Christmas of 86, I asked my parents to buy me those books for, as a Christmas gift, you know, and they did, you know. And I've got them books, I've got these books with me here. And so they did, and then that's kind of set me on to the path of like, like visual arts, I guess, and wanting to emulate um, First, kind of just doing graffiti in my notebooks, you know, but then thinking more about it and, and actually wanting to be the person photographing the graffiti. I started like getting on trains and get, bringing my camera with me and like taking my camera everywhere. And, and when I see a bit of graffiti, I'll like jump off the train. I'll like trying to get a photo of that graffiti and then jump back on the train and get going to where I needed to go, you know. So I spent a bit of time doing that when I was in high school, just photographing the, the kind of the local graffiti around Sydney. And yeah, it was, it was because of these two books that kind of start me on that path of like wanting to pick up a camera, but also looking at artwork too on the street. Like, I didn't know what fine art was. I had no idea. I just thought I was graffiti, you know? Art to me was graffiti at, at that time, you know? And so it set me on that path of like wandering the streets and just looking at things, you know? First I was looking at graffiti, and then eventually that led to other things, you know? That was like much more interesting than graffiti itself, you know? Yeah, so this is the camera that I used to photograph the graffiti um, in the 80s. But then also when I started photographing skateboarding, it was also the camera that I used to photograph the skateboarding. So um, I've got some of the, my, my kind of graffiti photos with me that I can show you. This is all in this album. There's a lot more. This is just one of many, many albums. This person is a graffiti artist from New York. He doesn't know who I am, but just because I have a camera, like, it's my excuse to hang around and just document, you know, his work in progress. Yeah, so it's just me, like, spending hours and my weekends and walking the street with that camera and just, like, documenting graffiti. Because someone has to do it, right? It might as well be me. And also, like, how long would it be up before someone actually paints over it and it's gone forever, you know? And sometimes I'll see something, I don't have my camera with me, and the very next weekend or the next day, I'll come with my camera and I'll, like, photograph that piece, you know, and then I'll walk maybe for another hour around that area to see what else is on, yeah. what else is around there, you know. It was just fun walking the street. Also, it was meditative. You know, with camera, no one's bothering you, just walk the streets, document the graffiti. Yeah. It's kind of meditative and fun. It was my way of getting into that kind of zone, you know. No, at the time, I wasn't thinking about photography. I was thinking about, I just want to get a record of this graffiti. I wasn't thinking about hey, I'm going to be a photographer. No, it, was, it wasn't that. It was just like, this is, I'm just really, let me just photograph this graffiti, yeah. you know? So in that sense, I wasn't thinking about barriers into art or anything. I was just like, this is what I like. This is just the, all the art world to me at that time was just graffiti. Nothing, ex nothing in the art world existed except graffiti. Graffiti was the art world, you know? <laughs> so that was it. That was what I was focusing on, you know? A few years after starting, you know, doing that, I met a guy called Aaron Brown when I was at university studying, a, doing a Bachelor of Arts, and he was a photographer. Um, he was a photographer specialising in photographing skateboarding. I grew up skateboarding, I was a skateboarder, you know. I lived and breathed skateboarding up to that point, you know, so I met him and he was a skateboarder too, but he also was a photographer photographing skateboarding and he did it for a lot of local um, skateboarding magazines. So we were at uni one day and he brought it up and then he'd show me some of his work that he'd been doing for the magazine. And he'd, we used to take photos using slide film. So he showed me one of his slides, you know, and he gave me one. And I, I remember it was a bright, sunny day. I just put it up to my eye and the, the, sun, sh the sun shone through it. I can see it, it was so clear. The colours, the image was so crisp and so almost 
like more real life than real life, you know, and I was completely like got smacked about that. And I said, I said to myself, I want to do that. I want to learn how to do what he does, you know. And so from that point on, I really started, um, yeah, focusing on photography. I eventually started following him around as he was photographing skateboarders. Yeah, and I got some of the um, skateboard magazines with me. So this is the first time I ever got a, like my pictures. One of the first time I ever got a, I got a, I got a proper spread in a magazine. I wasn't even an official photographer at this contest. I just had a camera and a flash, and I was like, I'm gonna pretend I belong here, and I'm gonna jump the barrier, and I just like taking photos, and no one was saying, no, you can't do it, because there wasn't that many people were there. No one had their phone. There was, there was no iPhone or anything, you know. No one had that. There wasn't that many people with cameras, you know. So you can do it. You can jump the barrier and just all of a sudden blend in into the other more official looking photographers and just take photos, just snap away, you know? So I did that. I, did, I went to a lot of skateboarding competitions and that's how I got also close to the action, you know? This is my peak of my skateboarding photography. I got the cover shot. Yeah, this is Tony Hawk at Bondi Beach doing a McTwist, you know? There wasn't anybody there that day. The skateboarding was dead in the mid 90s. No one cared about skateboarding. There wasn't anybody around and there was only very, maybe, maybe like half a dozen people there watching him skate, you know, at this demo. And I had, I had, like, I had my camera with me, you know, and I, I took a few photos and they, they were great and sent them into a magazine. And, and yeah, I got, I got the cover photograph and I got a couple of other photographs in, in the magazines. So this photo, how I was captured, it looks like I was on the ramp with him, but I'm actually not on the ramp. Where this ramp was situated at Bondi Beach, they had a big half pipe at Bondi Beach. There was actually a, a, um, a parking lot that was level with the, the ramp. You know, it was on the same kind of height as the deck of the ramp. So I was on that kind of where, where you park the cars and, and looking directly um, sort of at the height of the ramp. So I just stood on that platform and with my zoom lens and zoomed into it and got the photo. It wasn't just one shot, you know, I took a whole bunch of shots and some, some of the photos I took, like, he didn't land it, his boards just flipped everywhere, you know, he's like, his face wasn't showing and I was, you know. So it took, it took about half a roll to actually get it, for him to sort of build into the, the trick, you know, for him to like, okay, confident enough, enough to like land the trick now and also for me to like, okay, now I'm ready and now I know what to look for. Now I know how, how high he's gonna go, you know, and I'm ready for it because I've made all those mistakes beforehand, you know. I was only maybe doing photo, photography for maybe three years when I got that cover, you know, so I was very, still very new to it, you know. I was an amateur. It was incredible. I thought, I'd, I thought, oh, I can do this all the time. <laughs> only time I've ever been on a cover or anything. <laughs> yeah, so after spending a couple of years hanging out with Aaron, you know, um, hanging out with skateboarders and taking a whole bunch of skateboarding photography. Um, I eventually enrolled into a photography or a visual communications degree at the University of Western Sydney. And I eventually was formally taught how to take photographs, you know. And so by doing that course um, and still doing a lot of skateboarding photography at the same time, um, it kind of opened up my eyes to other, other types of photography, other, you know, photographers, other forms of photography. Having an interest in kind of graffiti, which involved spending a lot of time on the street, then having an interest in skateboarding, which again, involved a lot of time spending on the street. It was natural for me to spend a lot of time on the street with my camera, you know? So being on the street with my camera a lot, I kind of just fell into kind of photographing candid street photography. So just carrying a small camera like this and just walking the street and just capturing those really special, candid moments. So I've spent maybe the last 10 years doing that, candid street photography. In the library is what I was trying to do in the library. So instead of being out in the street, we're in the library and the challenge is for me to photograph the way I photograph on the street, but in the library setting. So just walking around, around the library, exploring different parts of the library, um, seeing what kind of catches my eye and what I can photograph. The interest, my interest in photography and my challenge that, took, that I give myself in photography is always to find interesting things amongst the everyday, everyday setting, you know, not setting anything up, you know, trying to find a uniqueness in that, draw that out, you know, with my camera, photograph that, capture it. It's really, I mean, photography about, for me, it isn't really about the equipment so much, it's really about just what you see.
you know, showing people, sharing with people what you see, you know, it's a great medium to share your ideas with. I mean, there's so many ways of getting into photography. I think one way to start is to find a passion that you have already for something else, right? And look at how photography is done in that kind of field and enter photography for that way.